Yo, 2KMC here, and I'm coming to your neighborhood to talk about the upcoming 2K Compete events. This weekend, if you want... The blue line making its way out of the station. Our setting tonight, Boston, Massachusetts. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to 2K Sports and another exciting edition of NBA Basketball. Tonight, it'll be the Boston Celtics going up. D.A., take it away. Kevin, thanks. Well, among the lead... Thanks, David. So a moment now to see the story for Boyan Bogdanovich. And when it comes to his scoring, he's enjoying a fantastic run. He's brought his points per game average up thanks to the work he's done in the past 10. And maybe he's got another big one in store tonight. And checking out Utah's opening lineup. O'Neal is out there with Bogdanovich. Then it's Conley. Then it's Joe Ingles. And it's Gobert in at the center, locking down the middle. And for the Celtics, Walker and Smart, the guards. Fournier out there with Jason Tatum. And it's Thompson in at the five spot. Just five on the clock. Got a piece of it. Stolen by O'Neal. Ingles with the ball. Out to the wing. Up top, Gobert. He's covered by Thompson. Shot clock at five. Here's Bogdanovich. That's in there. Conley with the assist. Bogdanovich has got the game going here with the first basket for the Jams. Walker the pass to Thompson. To the middle. Well-timed pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. And as the regular season winds toward the playoffs for those teams in the upper half of the standings, Greg, how much are they looking at seeding and their potential playoff opponents? <laughs> you know, Kevin, guys won't admit to it, but it's human nature to think ahead, to try and map out that route through the brackets. And you get a sense if you played a team three or four times, how you match up, what you do well against them, and what are areas of concern for you. Here's Tatum. And so it looks like the Celtics will retain possession here. So first quarter just over a minute and a half in. Six on the shot clock. Walker goes in. And what defense there from Gobert, putting that wingspan to work and not allowing anything easy inside. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It goes on Jason Tatum. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. And just a top-notch free throw shooter this year, all the way up there at 88%. down the first one and Bogdanovich is a confident efficient player a guy who can play either the two or three spots on the floor and so Bogdanovich nails both of them oh he's never rattled at the strike Always has that nice soft touch on his free throws. Outside Tatum. Thompson surveying the floor. Tatum with it. Now defended by Gobert. A second chance effort. Bogdanovich grabs the miss. They're struggling here early. One for five now. The D has them bottled up so far. And two shots coming up at the line as he gets fouled on the shot. And the foul goes against Boston. And then Bogdanovich, clever at finding ways to get to the line. Love seeing the aggression come out here with the defense. Throw good, Bogdanovich. Oh. 
And so Bogdanovich nails both of them. For Boston, they've gone just one for five from the field to start the quarter. And now, the first time out called here for Boston. They're looking for a little bit of redemption in this one after the loss to them here last time. Yeah, and they got beat last time these two teams met, and really, free throws were the story. a chance to check out stats for Marcus Smart. How last month turned out for him, averaging 12 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds. When you have a shooter like him off the bench, it makes scoring so much easier for the bench. Yeah, when he's taking on the scorer's role for that second unit, then the others can go focus on what they naturally do best. If you're just tuning in, we've played about two and a half minutes here in the first. Conley off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Oh, I love the intensity Conley plays with. This is what allows him to overcome aggressive defense like that right there. And Walker kicks to Fournier. Pass to Thompson. The Celtics working the ball around now. Now Walker over by Conley. Passes to Tatum. Looking to end the run. Gobert with the block. Now, Ingles. He averages more than 12 points a game. That's some dependable production. And there it is for him. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Next weekend, check out Big Top Challenge. The fun is larger than life, and so are the heads. And for more Wednesday action, make your way to the wreck. Welcome, everyone. This is the WNBA on 2K Sports. In this game, we'll see the Phoenix Mercury going up against the Atlanta Dream. And from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Blake Suniga alongside Tim Swartz and Brian Banifatemi. We're glad to have you with us. Everybody loves to watch players send shots away. And when you think of the best shot blockers in the WNBA, what traits do they all share? Well, usually other than being really tall, they're all fearless, Blake. It doesn't matter who the opponent is or where they're playing. If someone is attempting a shot, they want to block it. And they're also quick thinkers, guys, because they have to be ready to pounce on a moment's notice. Once they see an opportunity to make a defensive play, they don't think twice about making it. Yeah, that's a quick foul to pick up here in the opening quarter. Here's Diggin Smith. Pass to Breland. Great D that time from Tiffany Hayes. 
about one minute played here so far in the first. Left side, Tartar. That's one she knows she should have drained. People love the GOAT discussion in sports, guys. But when we talk about the WNBA, there is no argument. I think we can all agree that Diana Taurasi is the best we've ever seen. She's not just the leader in all-time scoring. No one is within 1,000 points of the 2004 first overall pick. But she's also top five in league history in assists. For Taurasi, it's not just the longevity, it's the incredible seasons and games. Well, I can start with the five scoring titles in her first eight years. During that third year, she set the record for points in a season. You can continue with 2006 when Tarazi scored a then Take record a 47 a points, Two including shots. eight made threes, which is also a record. Diana Tarazi, simply the best. And the first one drops. The fourth overall pick of the 2020 WNBA draft, Kennedy Carter is an electric scorer, averaging more than 20 points per game in each of her three years of college. And good on the second, so she makes both. Kennedy Carter goes by the nickname Hollywood, and the 2020 fourth overall pick is known to put on a show offensively. In each of Carter's three years in college, she averaged over 20 points per game. That includes scoring 46 in a game as a freshman. It's stolen by Elizabeth Williams. Here's Hayes. Here's Parker. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Well, for what's a routine shot, she looked a little nervous on that release, wouldn't you say? And with Carter, she's known for how dynamic she is with the ball. Well, to score like she did against the best competition in such a tough league in college at just 5'7", Carter's quicks are fantastic. Welcome to Atlanta by uh, Hawk star Trey Young. Carter hopes to have a similar impact on the dream. She makes the first. And guys, when you talk about Kia Nurse, you got to talk about her immediate impact in the WNBA. In her rookie year, she played in all 34 games. In her second season, she started in all 34 games. In year two, she was the team's second leading scorer and also voted to be a starter in the All-Star game. So she gets them both. And with everything Nurse has accomplished so far, where do you see her game going next? Well, she's already shown improvement as a scorer and a facilitator, and I think that will only continue. Her three-point shooting has also taken a big step, so her range might start to extend a bit further. I'd say she has a lot more all-star teams to make, guys. She's just scratching the surface of her potential. If you're just tuning in, we've played about two and a half minutes here in the first. And there's the foul. It's on Cheyenne Parker. That is her first foul of the game. And it's the Mercury with the ball. Back to Nurse. Pass to Breland, to Rossi. Six to shoot. A shaky first few minutes. Five attempts with only one make. And again, Phoenix no good. So they take the lead. Shrewd play by Strickland getting the ball to a ready shooter. She's playing terrific, unselfish basketball. Now here's Diggins Smith. And it's Strickland with the rebound. Terrific job defending the basket that time. It's not an easy task stopping her when she's headed to the rim. And it's Hayes missing. She kind of short-armed that shot after doing a nice job of getting open. From deep, Skyler against Smith. The Mercury with another miss. They had some botched coverage that turned into no coverage. And when she's open like that, you don't see her miss that sort of look very often. 
Got to do more than this to stop Carter. She's uh, dependable at fighting through aggressive coverage. Now here is Breland. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. The drive by Diana Taurasi. That one doesn't drop. Now the Dream take it the other way. Strickland outside. He and Nurse playing some nice D. Well, they call them layups for a reason. It's uh, not easy to miss that close to the rim. Atlanta leading. And here we go, the Dream on the fast break. Took him no time at all on that one. Can carry the load or serve as a compliment to others. It's Hayes' versatility that I rank among the league's best. And the Mercury call time here. And guys, Shakina Strickland has to be one of the best long-range shooters in the WNBA. She takes a number of threes per game, but she also shoots a high percentage. And don't forget, she won the 2019 WNBA three-point contest. They've been looking out of sorts here in the last few possessions. So this is when they need to be patient and find a high percentage shot. Pass to Griner. Great D that time from Elizabeth Williams. And speaking of Strickland's three-point shooting, what challenges does that pose defensively for opponents? Well, she's just so efficient that you have to keep someone around her at all times once she crosses the half court, once she's on the perimeter. And that can leave your defense a little vulnerable because then driving lanes, passing lanes start to open up. But I wouldn't give Strickland any clean looks from anywhere deep. Nurse with the bucket. You see why Nurse operates way more than your average guard inside. It's not just her height, it's also the mentality. Now here's Montgomery. Pass to Hawkins. And here's Williams. defense Phoenix trailing by four left side Williams just four to shoot they get the rebound and she drops in the layup off glass hey look if it ain't broke don't fix it they keep getting in the paint and they keep scoring points and you know Brian there's not really a lot you can do as a defense when they keep getting in the paint like they have been on this run. Here's Cunningham. Looking for her first basket still in this one. And the ball out of play. The Dream will have it. Where was she going with that pass? I have no clue. That, that's awful. That's just giving it away. Out, out, out. Now Williams. pointer and that concludes the first quarter of play it's the dream they lead by six and back in a moment as we'll get underway